Hi, Denoy2. A couple of you have got in touch with me about issues regarding the Frankenstein essay, so what I thought I would do, um, because I don't want to set you up to fail, I want you to be able to do this to you to, to the best of your ability. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd just talk you through the essay, or at least how I would approach the essay, and then I think you'll feel a little bit more um, empowered to do it independently. Okay. So here's a sheet. Uh, you can see there that I've highlighted um, three key areas, three different colours. You don't have to do this, but I'm just showing you my thinking. So the first thing I've done is I've used a yellow highlighter to highlight key information that's given to me at the top of the extract. So it says the extract is taken from the conclusion of Mary Shelley's novel. I'm just reminding myself of Mary Shelley's name there. I'm going to use it in my writing because for AO2, if I can talk about Mary Shelley's intentions, I'm getting marks, uh, so it's important to use that name. Uh, it comes after Frankenstein's death and is written from the perspective of Robert Walton. I don't think in the exam they're actually going to give you the perspective, but um, I've included it here. This is this is the right, this is the denouement, this is the total conclusion of the book. Um, so we've got the entirety of the rest of the book to play with, and chronologically this helps us with our essay too, because we can basically plot how we get to this point. So the question is at the bottom underneath the extract. Starting with this moment in the novel, explore how Shelley presents the monster. It's a gift of a question. So the yellow just shows me the kind of content that I need to cover. You can see here I've highlighted in orange that I know I need to analyse the extract and I've analysed in green that I need to analyse the novel as a whole. If I don't do that, I'm going to lose loads of marks. So I'm just reminding myself to do that. So now I'm going to look at um, basic ideas first. OK, at this stage, I have highlighted my question. I've maybe like flicked my eye over the extract, but I've not even started reading it. All I'm doing is I'm formulating my ideas. You guys are clever, like you don't even need this extract to do a good job um, of a question like this. So before you even start, think about, well, if there's a question on the monster, what do I know I want to cover? So I know if I'm looking at the monster, there are themes of, and you can see I put these here for you, responsibility, loneliness, prejudice, evil and monstrosity, the dangers of the enlightenment era, because obviously the monster is a product of a scientific experiment that's taken out irresponsibly. Um, so those are the themes I can cover. I can also start thinking about context. As soon as I know this is a question on the monster, I know what context is relevant to that. Um, and I've only put down a few ideas here, but I could seriously go on. Uh, the epistolary form is obviously important because the monster is seen through different subjective perspectives. Uh, I know I want to bring in the nature versus nurture debates uh, and the concept of tabula rasa as proposed by John Locke. I might want to talk about the monster as perhaps being a tragic hero or perhaps being the gothic double of Frankenstein. I might want to talk about galvanism, but it doesn't really sit with this extract, but I could if, it, if, if the question's on the monster. Finally, my general ideas are that in my essay, I am definitely going to talk about how the monster transforms and why he transforms and the why is going to be the thing that elevates my response. But I also want to talk about the structure in, of the novel and how that illuminates the theme of prejudice. So we first see the monster through the eyes of Frankenstein and he is hideous and he is a catastrophe. And then we see the monster from his own perspective and we suddenly realise he's this well of human emotion. He is this incredibly empathetic individual. He's innocent. So the structure of the novel really formulates how we see the monster and specifically answering the question how Shelley presents the monster. So these are my general ideas. I've not even started to look at the extract yet. OK, so having jotted down my general ideas, kind of things, thoughts on themes and context, which are going to help me. Themes and context, by the way, both cover AO3. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through the extract. I can see that the extract is the end of the novel, the denouman, and therefore what I'm going to start with, which perhaps I might not normally start with. Normally I might start with the extract and then go to elsewhere. But because this question is about you know, the monster as a the monster throughout the novel and my extract is at the end. I want to look at how he's got to that point. Um, so uh, you can see here I've picked out four areas for studying the monster. 
First of all, the perspective of Frankenstein, he refers to the creation of the monster as a catastrophe. Um, and that particular noun has a lot of con connotations, which I'm not going to go into because it's your job to do that. Um, he talks about bestowing animation upon lifeless matter. The monster is matter. I mean, look at that noun. Is he, he's not got any um, autonomy. He's there's no empathy. It, it, it's completely dehumanized. All those body parts are, are, are treated like they are objects. Uh, there's a cruelty to Frankenstein there and, and certainly an arrogance. Um, also, he refers to him as a vile insect. And that metaphor is uh, loaded with hatred. Uh, we might want to talk about the innocence of the monster when he is first birthed. He talks about my chief delights were the sights of flowers. He refers to the sky as the radiant roof of light because he doesn't have the language to say that it is the sky because he's been left completely uneducated. He has to educate himself. So he's born with innocence. However, through lo loneliness, he becomes evil. And so you can see the quotes I've picked out for his loneliness are all about his transformation, how he is nurtured to become evil. So we're bringing in like the nature versus nurture debate here, perhaps. Um, so he uses that amplification. Oh, I've done it already. I'm trying not to give too much away. Um, the monster refers to himself as alone, miserably alone. He talks about the barbarity of man uh, when he is um, bruised by stones from uh, going through a village. Felix, from the de Lacy family, they're supposed to be the best of humanity, goddammit. Felix struck him violently with a stick. Uh, inevitably, that kind of treatment, that kind of environmental impact is going to embody some kind of transition within the monster and yes there we are he's become a monster now so i picked out a couple of quotes that i think are really interesting you could pick totally different ones he does a lot of horrible things the murder of clerval the murder of william to name just a couple um so after murdering william he says the murder i have committed because I am forever robbed of all that she could give me. This is the point where he's putting the miniature on Justine and framing Justine. And he's saying, I only killed William because a woman would never give me her love. And um, there's a kind of cruelty to that. Um, there also is the reason for his behaviour. I mean, as a modern woman reading that, it reminds me of this kind of subculture of in incels which we have today um certainly something to look up if you wanted to give a really like original reading of the text and then we've obviously got the threatening language of i shall be with you on your wedding night and that is hanging over frankenstein all the way through the book all the way up until the very later chapters um so that's elsewhere in the book you can see really clearly that frankenstein sees him in one way he is birthed in another as this really innocent creature the treatment he receives makes him become the monster who frankenstein originally thought he was okay so that's elsewhere so now we're on the extract. Um, as I said before, I might actually, if, it, if I was doing this in the exam, I might start with the extract first, if I thought that that's a better jumping off point. But just for this question, I think it's more logical to do elsewhere first, because this is the day noon one, and I'm definitely going to refer to that in my own response. Anyway, so I've picked out here um, the fact that the monster says... Um, that Frankenstein cherished a desire of revenge against me. It would be better satiate, satiated in my life than in my destruction. That verb satiated means satisfied. So he's pointing out that life is a torture to him. It's much worse for the monster to keep on living than for the monster to die. Um, and Frankenstein didn't realise that. So anytime you have reference to torture, you need to bring in the modern Prometheus, this idea of like... Um, Frankenstein is the modern Prometheus. That's what Shelley referred to the book as. That was the second title for it. Um, Frankenstein stole the power of God by creating a life. Ergo, he is like Prometheus who stole fire from Mount Olympus uh, to give to humankind. Um, and so the monster is kind of mirroring or doubling Frankenstein here because he's living a, a permanent torture.
And that torture is described as an agony, which is superior to Frankenstein's because of the bitter sting of remorse. Now, the figurative language there is, is interesting because you have to think if somebody has the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, and therefore they feel remorse, they feel regret, they must have a moral code of some kind. And we know that the monster did have or does have a moral code. He just has that kind of married to an Old Testament notion of retribution and revenge. Um, and then he deeply regrets what he's done to, to, to innocent William and innocent Elizabeth. Um, however, he still committed those horrible acts of monstrosity. So there's an, an idea of his kind of innate goodness there. And there's a semantic field of fire because basically the monster is saying here that what he's going to do is he's going to commit suicide. He's going to go up on a funeral pile. He's going to um, kill himself in that conflagration. So conflagration is another word for fire. Um, there's a lot of discussion of feelings and losing those feelings, trying to get away from those feelings. Uh, feelings and the importance of identity and emotion was a key concept within the movement of Romanticism, whereby they were suggesting that uh, logic shouldn't take the place of emotion and empathy. Um, and in kind of repeating, repeatedly referring to feelings within this extract, uh, we do get a sense of the monster as an embodiment of romantic values. Um, by saying that he's going to commit suicide, we are reminded of the fact that um, when he was in the De Lacy household, the monster read the book Sorrows of Werther by Goethe, Sorrows of Werther by Goethe, sorry, um, which is all about the fact that we should empathise with those people who are suicidal and we should um, care for their experiences. Um, and that's perhaps something that Shelley is alluding to here. Towards the end of the conclusion, you can clearly see his superhuman powers. He sprang from the cabin window, not something that anybody else is capable of doing. And then at the end, he's lost in darkness and distance. And I think what's nice about the ending is that he's told us what he's going to do, but we don't see it. We're not given that, um, that ability. So there's a level of ambiguity in the conclusion. Does the monster kill himself? Is the monster still out there? That's the kind of idea that uh, Shelley is playing upon, that the dangers of science, the dangers of irresponsibility, the dangers of failing to empathise with other beings, all of those things are in society. OK, they're there and they'll be found by you. Right, so I'm sorry that was terribly quick, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a crutch um, if you are struggling with this task. Good luck. I really look forward to reading what you come up with.